Lord, we thank you for your word. We ask for everything to come out of my mouth to be your words and not mine. I don't want to say anything unless it's you. I don't even want to be up here unless you got something to say tonight through me. So, Lord, take over. Have your way right now in the name of Jesus. And I ask God for you to minister to us in a great and mighty way. In Jesus' name. If I was asked a question, what would be the biggest thing that you could share to people about everything that's happened in your life over the past three and a half, four years of all this change and all that has come in my life, and I tell you, no matter what I could preach, I could, I could talk about this, talk about that, and it would have a lot of good things, but I'm telling you the number one thing is the person of the Holy Spirit. There is nothing better than that. I'm telling you, he is more than just a, a teacher. He's more than just one to comfort us. He's more than just one that is uh, uh, here because Jesus died and rose again. I, he is more. And I'm telling you, a lot of times we forget about the person of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk about some things tonight. But uh, here's one thing that I want to start out with is the Holy Spirit belongs to us. How many like that? Belongs to you. The Holy Spirit belongs to you. Hallelujah. How many, how many would say by what you listen to in the area of music, by what you look at in the area of the streets, or by what you look at and listen to in the area of television, is the Holy Spirit getting along with everything you're doing? Hallelujah. You said what? Well, you want to hear something interesting? Uh, the girls over here, uh, they're not there now, of course, but they were there. Hallelujah. And, and they... They, they asked me to do the same thing that I did last night tonight. I said, what do you mean? What do you want me to do that I did last night? She, and one of them said, I want you to preach about the seeds. That was awesome. I think I had a lot of those seeds. Come on. These are 8- and 10-year-old girls who wanted me to preach more about seeds. Hallelujah. That's what, I mean, and th they've never been so glued to what I was saying that any time, any time, and they've been in a whole lot of services. Probably, they've probably been in at least 150 to 200 services I've preached. And here, they have actually were more in tune last night than they've ever been. And it's talking about seeds and issues that we have to deal with as a body of Christ to walk in dunamis power. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, speak of them. Hallelujah. You have to get the CD. Find out what I talked about. Okay. Uh, when non-Christians are asked about the person of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit, what kind of things do they ask? Or what kind of things do they think they bring up? Come on. What do you think non-Christians bring up when, it talks about, when they talk about the Holy Spirit? Most of it's spooky. Come on. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It's a ghost. Spooky. Ooh. Hallelujah. And not only that, but, you know, we are tongue-speaking. Hallelujah. Tongue-speaking. And they kind of flip out about that. The world, not to mention the church. Hallelujah. I remember I was in a church one time, and I was in the church, and I was just feeling an urgency to speak in tongues. Quietly. I mean, I was speaking like this. And I was just no louder than that. And I'm just going to town. All of a sudden, a pastor comes up to me and says, could you be quiet? I go, what? He goes, could you be quiet? You're, in a, you're, you're distracting. I said, and I, I, if, I was, if I was, if I knew then what I know now, <laughs> I would have said, well, there must be something in you that doesn't like the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, Hallelujah. <laughs> But back then, I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm, I, you know, we shouldn't do that. Come on. And I'm telling you, we as a body of Christ, it's almost gotten out of order to speak in tongues. Come on. Hallelujah. Isn't that quiet? You say, how in the world does he take every sermon and direct it toward religion? I have no idea. It just works out that way. I guess it's because it's, we're on the anti-religion tour. Come on, hallelujah. I guess it's just something we have to go after. I'm telling you, the blue jeans aren't going to do it. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> I did have shorts on earlier, and I, I wasn't quite ready for that one. Hallelujah, praise God. <laughs> let's, let's go to a sc- couple scripture tonight. Go to John chapter 16, and we're going to look at a couple scripture tonight. Hallelujah, we're going to have a good time. Anybody ready for a good time? Hallelujah. Somebody said today, they said, uh, you know, you want to really stir up religion, wear sweatpants. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. It would. I'm telling you. And I said, well, I'll wait for a pastor's conference before I do that. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine me at a pastor's conference? <laughs> Praise God. I've been to a few, but I never got to speak. Hallelujah. It's going to happen one day, though. They're going to invite me not know who I am. And then they're going to be shocked and amazed at the same time. We really need to understand. It's not all about, I'm not trying to tear people down. It's not about that. It's about waking us up. Because I guarantee you, every person in this room has a form of religion. It gets in you. We can't, I mean, it's always on me somewhere. And I'm, I don't know how it gets on me. How can somebody be so adamant in, 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 in all that I am about and get a hold of a little bit of uh, religion. It's easy. It picks up. Praise God. Hallelujah. It really is. Praise God. And I'm telling you, we got to understand. I believe Jesus is about to turn some tables over. In a whole new realm. Jesus is about to come into church and turn upside down some things. Come on. You know why? Because he's tired of it. All right. John 16, 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I not go away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. We got to understand the Holy Spirit was sent to us. And I'm telling you, we've got to understand that there is not enough treasure in our hearts for the Holy Spirit. If I was the Holy Spirit, I wouldn't be given the church the time of day. <laughs> Come on, really? Why? Because the Holy Spirit gets grieved. Now, over the last few years, I've come to be so in tune, and I'm not saying this to brag, I'm saying this It's because you become, what I'm talking about tonight is Holy Spirit unity. And what I mean by that is I have come so in tune with the Holy Spirit that I feel what the Holy Spirit feels. So when the Holy Spirit gets grieved because of religion, I feel it. At first, I didn't understand it. I'm like, why am I so upset? But these people, they don't look like anything wrong. They look okay. They look like they love God. It's just they were walking in such a religious mentality that that even the Holy Spirit was grieved. How many of us do you believe are grieving the Holy Spirit some way or another? Why? Because we're constantly trying to shut things off. We're constantly wanting everything to come the way we want it. Hallelujah. What if the Holy Spirit just came in and knocked everybody down one Sunday? Come on. Just knocked them down and knocked them down to where they couldn't get up. Hallelujah. Wouldn't that be good? I don't know about you, but I think it's time to knock some churches completely down to let them know God's still in control. Hallelujah. And I hope it's some of them on television. All of a sudden, what happened? Hallelujah. And I would even like the pastor to be the one standing going. (laughs) What happened? Wouldn't that mess up some things? Couldn't you see some of our young preachers that's on the television right now just standing in their crowd of 5,000 just going. They're all knocked down. They're all laying on, on top of each other. And it came from nowhere. You know what? Things are going to happen in the days ahead. And it's going to happen because no man can shut down the person, the Holy Spirit. No person can stop and stifle what's getting ready to happen. Now, at the same time, 
Let's go ahead and go to the sixth, same chapter, John 16, verse 13 through 15. Same chapter, 13 through 15. It says, How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore I say, I said, I, that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. See, I believe by the Spirit of God, just as the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are three in one, unity. We are supposed to be in unity with all three. So what I'm talking about tonight is the Holy Spirit unity. I'm talking about being in unity with the Holy Spirit. So in other words, we got to be so in tune with what the Holy Spirit's about to where it, it's not just, uh, um, and I'm going to get into this, and I have to talk about this. God, give me a revelation that a lot of the body of Christ, we assume the Holy Spirit is a manifestation. Somebody's shaking on the floor. That's the Holy Spirit. No, that's a manifestation. Come on. Hallelujah. Wind starts blowing. Things start shaking. People start speaking in tongues. It's all part of the Holy Spirit. It's all a manifestation or a fruit of the Holy Spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit himself. There's not enough attention to the one. Come on. We got to give him the recognition. We got to give him the due to his name. Hallelujah. And he is do great things. Come on. Could you imagine? Go ahead and think about this. Even though the church right now is about on corpse uh, uh, status as a, as a whole, well, overall, I'm just saying, and if you disagree, tell me where all the miracles are. We are on the next to the, to the corpse status right now as a body of Christ as a whole. What if the Holy Spirit didn't exist right now? I mean, I'm telling you. I mean, if we're this messed up now with the Holy Spirit, with the little knowledge we have of him, how much more would we be without him? He's actually doing a lot more for us when we don't even have knowledge. Sometimes the Holy Spirit's doing a lot more for us whenever we don't even know who he is. Come on. Everybody is talking about... Well, the shaking on the floor, that's the Holy Spirit. No, that's not the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If that's the Holy Spirit, we're, we're done already. We've had the manifestations. And I'm telling you, we are in a place right now. There is a lot of people that don't even realize they don't know the Holy Spirit. You know, about, you know uh, another thing I preached one time, and it was a service Jeff Jensen was there. And I was preaching, and he came into the service, and I preached that night on uh, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. And a whole different sermon, a whole different content of what I'm talking about tonight. And I remember that night, God told me, he said, most, and he, did, I, I, how many know the Holy Spirit knew who was going to be there? And it didn't matter. It would be accurate for everyone. He said, most of the people here are not filled with the Holy Spirit. And here, now let's think about this. Here's what he said. And uh, some might have been there, the tear. But here's what the Holy Spirit said. He said, it's because they believe speaking in little tongues is being filled. We could do that with an eighth of a tank. Come on. Filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to talk about a little scripture later of how they were filled with the Holy Spirit and then they were filled again. That kind of messes us up a little bit. My goodness, filled and filled again. See, we get filled. Oh, i got to go ahead and go this way. Hallelujah, I've already preached it before years ago, but or, or a couple years back, but I'm going to do it again. And all of a sudden, God just dropped it in my spirit. So we got to talk about this for a minute. If we were really, when we get filled with the Holy Spirit, what's the evidence? We speak in tongues. That's what the average body of Christ is. But if we think about being filled with the Holy Spirit, we should actually have activation of miracles. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. 
walk in miracles, go get them out of the wheelchair. Could you imagine? We find out most of the body of Christ isn't filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, my goodness, and that messes up. Don't you love it? Some of us are looking at ourselves now. Doesn't it work that way? You say you got to step on your toes every night? Well, you came back, didn't you? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Some of these little things we think about and we don't think about, it takes some guy to say it so we can think about it. Come on. I mean, I thank God for the signs and wonders, the healings and miracles that do take place. I thank God for the, for the uh, uh, seasons of great grace and all the things that take place. I thank God for that. But guess what? We haven't got it yet. And you want to know something interesting? Here's what Jeff Jansen t- said to me. He got up and he was testifying on some things, stood up and testified about some things, excited about what was going on there in Litchfield. And then here's the very words he said. He said, I preached this exact sermon last night and in the city, and it was a place where there was no television, no no recording, no type of thing, and he preached it the very night before. He said, line up online, everything you said, every scripture you turned to, I preached it just the night before. That's when God's speaking. Look out. The Holy Spirit's going to keep talking about himself, letting people know, hey, you don't have me yet. You just got a part of me. I don't know about you, but I don't want just a piece. I want the whole pie. Yeah, that's cool. I want the hungry man, Holy Spirit. The full meal deal. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus (laughs) prepared. Everybody's getting hungry now. Look out. Praise God. The Lord Jesus prepared his disciples for his departure. And the Holy Spirit prepares the believer to do his work. I'm telling you, that's the end result. He's not coming back until we have a glorious church. People are flipping out. Do you know the world's supposed to end 2012? How? Have you read your Bible? Praise God. It's like it can't happen. I mean, I I know we're not going to know. When it happens, exactly, everybody's going to have a little surprise on their hands. But at the same time, the church sure isn't glorious. And unless we get a whole lot of acceleration in the next 12 months, beyond everything else I believe that I have an understanding about concerning certain details to do with Israel, I believe there's no way, just from the glorious church, we hate, we're not there yet. If we don't get a comprehension of the Holy Spirit and who He is, then we sure isn't we aren't going to come into glory glorious how can we i mean everybody 2012 you know what's going on is there's a whole lot of doom and gloom let's buy a barrel of food that's what's going on preachers are preaching this buy a 40 barrel of food it save your life that's fear people did it in 2000 people did it in 2002 people did it in 2008 every few years there's another the world's going to end. We're about to come into this. We're about to come into that. Some prophet prophesies about an earthquake taking place, and all of a sudden, then there's another food drive. Send me $400. I'll send you a barrel of food. It's cream of wheat with water. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, it's worse than the military food. Come on. They actually get a chef now. Hallelujah. They do get some bags of food you got to just crack and break, and then they, you eat it. But I'm telling you, there's a whole lot of churches that are just feeding on the, on the fear. Every once in a while I get some brochures or, or things, and, and they just, they're like, oh, you better get ready. I'm like, I'm not going to a fear conference. Hallelujah. You want me to come to conference? I need to preach. I ain't coming to hear you. Hallelujah. Fear is not what the Spirit is supposed to be giving us. And I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, not the other spirits. Uh, We better go on or I'm going to get all messed up. I'm still on page one, you know. Okay. (laughs) Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 27. I'm just going to say this one. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. 
Come on, isn't that what a promise was given to us? Praise God. I'm telling you, we need the Holy Spirit. I love it sometimes. I used to, I, I used to, I used to mentor some, some people uh, and different things, and here's what I told some of them, and it flipped them out. They said, they, here's what they said. They said, they were telling me, oh, I'm just having trouble with this. I'm having a trouble with lust. I can't stop watching soap operas because I just love those hunky men going with all the women. And I was like, they go, how am I ever going to get delivered? What can, can you cast something out? And that's part of it. And I said, and all of a sudden I said, you can't do it. And they were like, what? We can't do it. What do you mean? I said, you can't get delivered. And they, they just got all mad. They were like, I rebuked that in the name of Jesus. I said, without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the only one that's going to deliver you. The Holy Spirit is what's going to come to you and guide you into, into uh, supernatural righteousness. The Holy Spirit will get it out when no one else can. Now, I believe in casting out devils. I've got to see a whole lot of that in the past few years. My goodness, I didn't realize church... And it's all always in the church. I'm not finding the devils in the world as much as I'm finding them in the church. You know, the truck stop, well, that's a whole other subject. Hallelujah. Actually, that's probably not any more than the church. You think I'm kidding? I've seen a few on pastors recently, but I, I'm not going to go there. Hallelujah. I guess I just did. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. I'm just going to read this one, too, and then we'll, we'll all look at Acts. Uh, it says this, Know you not that you are a temple of God, that, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Some people treat their body like, like an amusement park. Hallelujah. Come on. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. How many believe that the Holy Spirit really doesn't want to stick around in some of us? Hallelujah. It's like, uh, praise God, I'm about to check out a class. Come on, it's defilement. There's some defiling going on in, in, in some, of the, but some of the things uh, of the church. I'm telling you. I remember one time I was in a church and I was getting ready to minister. I was a part of a prophetic team. I'll never forget this ever, ever. Never saw much in the spirit, but that day all of a sudden my eyes started opening. And then I wanted to shake it off. You want to know why? Because I began to see the pastor, man, a pastor, male pastor, uh, dressed up as a, as, a, as a female in a female lingerie in the spirit. Having some romance with his wife, and she had some male things going on. I saw that by the spirit. Yeah, just shake it off, praise God. I'm telling you, I have to give it part of the image because that's what I saw. And, and really, no matter how much detail you just got, you haven't got enough. Trust me. And I saw this, and I'm like, I'm getting ready to minister in this guy's church. He's got a sick, twisted thing going on in his bedroom, doesn't he? And you know what? When I said that, I thought I was saying it quietly. <laughs> I said that out loud just like I did now. But luckily, only the prophetic team heard me, and one of them turned back and thought, I know, I was just seeing things. <laughs> I said, well, two have agreed. I think we've got the right thing going on here. I think we need to forget the body of Christ and deal with the leader. We went after him pretty good in a, in a nice, humble way. We didn't, we didn't say exactly. We just all said, we know what's going on. Between you and you, husband and wife. And that's some twisted things going on on both of your parts. You've come out of some things, and you guys need to get right. Both of you need to step down. I mean, we just let them have it. Uh, because, And then we started looking in the spirit and the body of Christ, and we saw all kinds of little perverted demons on people. It's no wonder the leaders were giving it to them. Isn't that right? You don't let anyone lay hands on you quickly. Hallelujah. We got rid of most of them. At first... The elders started getting mad because they didn't understand. But the pastor and his wife, they knew what was going on. <laughs> the problem is, a lot of times, most, 
most people have enough fear of the Lord to clean it up a week before pro pro prophetic conferences come. They went ahead and had some entertainment in the church that day, so it was so fresh. Yeah, they confessed all kinds of things later, and I had to leave the room. I'm telling you, this is a church, and this church had about 500 people in it. <laughs> yeah, instead of nanny cam, how about God cam? Hallelujah. And the reason I'm saying these things is because we don't realize what's going on, but our body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. If our leaders are walking in something that's wrong, it makes me mad, really. It does. If I, what I hate, what I hated one time, I, here, I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. I remember I was a young man of the Lord. I was in a revival in 1998, and I was in a revival, and I was a young man of the Lord going to Bible school, being trained for Bible training, and all kinds of things was going on. I was in this revival meeting, and they invited anyone who was having any problems whatsoever with lust. I was like, praise God, I'm going up. Come on, hallelujah. You say, why? Because I knew I had a problem. I didn't know how deep it was. I didn't know how much, but I knew I didn't was a completely delivered because my looking away was very slow. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. I was a young man. That's what people do. I mean, we think, why? Because what's the world say? Look, but don't touch. But I remember I was, I, I responded to that altar call as the first person of the whole revival. I was up there. I was like, I want it. I ran right up there. I was like, I'm ready. And praise God, the, the prophet, he called it out. He called some things out that happened in my childhood that was connected to a root. And he broke it off, and he laid hand, and all of a sudden, the power of God came all over me. I fell in the spirit. All of a sudden, this young man started praying for me and speaking in tongues, and all of a sudden, I felt like I had willies. You say willies. I don't know what that means, but it, it just felt like, Ew, get your hands off me, boy. I didn't know what it was, but I knew it wasn't good. All of a sudden, at the end of the altar call, by that time I'm at my seat, and I'm, I was feeling pretty good, but I wasn't feeling quite sure what was going on with the wheelies. All of a sudden, they said, and if there's some people that have some problems, and they started talking about specifics of lust, this boy that laid hands on me went up. I was like, I'm going to go up there and deck him. That's what I said to the person next to me. And I walked up there, and that was my intention, right in front of everybody. Praise God. I'm like, I repented of this in front of all of you, and I'm going to repent of this after I do this. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was mad. I'm like, how dare you pray for me? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm like, I'm going to go up there and just knock him out, and then I'll just repent. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get kicked out of Bible school. It won't be no big deal. <laughs> but I lost it after I got up there. I just told the prophet, I said, this is what just happened. He goes, they expelled that student. You know why? Because he was doing some things on the side, too. He was using the, using the Internet and things. They didn't expel him that night. They expelled him within a couple of days because they started checking him out. And, man, his uh, his his his... His modem back then, it was modem, and uh, praise God, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> they checked everything, and he was doing some really bad things on the Internet. <laughs> praise God. Come on. And I'm telling you, it's the reason, the reason, the reason, <laughs> I already said, <laughs> our body is a temple. And I'm telling you, there's some things that need to be cleaned up in the church. Hallelujah. You know what I heard pastor say one time? It's natural to do this and this. It's like, no, it's not. It's a demon. It's only natural because we're of a sinful nature. Get it? It's of nature, but it's not natural. Come on, we need to shut it down. You say, you're saying this in front of children. God's got a way with words, don't he? Hallelujah. A lot of times after the service, they'll be like, what did you mean? All right. Acts chapter 4, let's look at this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And that's when you go to McDonald's and just buy them anything they want. All right. <laughs> Acts chapter 4, verse 29. Don't get any ideas, though. Hallelujah. They're, they, they, their eyes just got big. Oh, McDonald's. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Acts chapter 4, verse 29 through 31. 
I'm just reading a little bit of scripture. This is supposed to be a short sermon, but since I'm only on page two, it's not really going that quick, is it? I, I've lived a lot of things through through the church. You guys don't have no idea. I'm just talking about the church I had to deal with. Not, I mean, I'm not just talking about the church. I'm talking about the pastors, the leaders, the the Bible school. It's a God. It's a God forsaken world. It really is. I meant to say that. Okay, Acts chapter four, verse twenty nine through thirty one. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness. They may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. That's powerful. But this is the second time they were filled. You say, why? Because, see, you got to understand, when they went to the upper room, they were all filled, the place was shaken, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and then after that, they walked in miracles, they had some healings. These people right here that's in this scripture walked, and people were already healed, had already been healed before this scripture, and I'm telling you, they'd already walked in a level of healing and miracles, but yet they're asking, we need more. You know why? Because the body, it got to the place, people started coming against them. Imagine that. Even the early church had the church coming against them. Because that's what it was. It was, it, was the, it was the religious people that were coming against them. And they were all filled again. But this time they spoke the word of God with boldness. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's a filling, and then there's a filling again. And then we can even talk about tonight what I'm not going to, other than refer to it, be filled with fire. Come on. I, I believe we ought to get the whole full filled. I'm not saying full is a, uh, F-O-O-L. I'm talking about the full, F-U-L-L. Come on. Come on, I'm trying to have some fun. Pay attention. All right. <laughs> Many believers seem afraid to share the good news of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is the source. The courage. The Holy Spirit will give you Courage. Give you boldness to speak something to someone that you can't ever do any other time. The ministry of the Holy Spirit touches lives of the believers in many ways and prepares them uh, uh, for the work that God has in mind for them. How many know God has a work in mind for you that's a lot different many times than the work you have in mind for you? Praise God. Yeah, you're still trying to figure it out, but that's okay. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise God. Doesn't matter if you're on first base, second base, or third. You're still figuring it out. Hallelujah. Praise God. I hit a home run, and I still got to figure it out again. I'm like, what? Hallelujah. Isn't that messed up? You'd think if, if a guy like me can write 10 books uh, within like two months or so, that you would be able to have a whole lot more knowledge than I have. But let me go ahead and say this. The biggest uh, uh, testimony I can give you tonight is I admit stupidity. I admit I don't know anything without him. Or sometimes I start writing in the books, and it's like the Holy Spirit takes over. I get in a zone. It's, it's like, whoa, there's no way I could be writing all the pages. I mean, if you think about the pages, it's 200, 300 I mean, my goodness, there's 1,000, there's 1,200, there's 1,400, 1,500, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I mean, there's probably 2,500 plus pages I've already written in the past couple months. We got to understand you can't do that without the Holy Spirit. I would rather write with the Holy Spirit than write without. There's a few people on Facebook, and I keep saying it because it's funny because uh, their, their tune with me is, uh, tone with me is kind of different. Hallelujah, because the books are coming forth so fast. They've been writing the same book, trying to get it out there in the last three or four months. The one book, hallelujah, and, and they just can't get it out there. And they keep saying, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And, and next thing I, I got a, two or three more up there, hallelujah. It's like, praise God. Hallelujah. It, it, yeah, that's the difference is being tapped in. And I'm telling you, I'm not saying that everybody that writes a book without the Holy Spirit is wrong. But I would rather have a whole lot of knowledge of the Spirit of God in writing the book than have any knowledge of mine. 
Paul was a very smart man. Everybody believe that? But he realized he wasn't smart at all when it came to the Holy Spirit. Some of you getting quiet. You know what happens when we get the Holy Spirit as the person? The church comes alive. <laughs> Praise God. I remember one time a woman came to the church. She came, and I was a pastor at that church. She came, and she goes, wow. She goes, that's awesome. She goes, this is a good church. I'm going to be a part of this church. She goes, this place has a pulse. I like that. I was like, praise God. And uh, she goes, I, I just want a church with a pulse. And I said, all of a sudden, I just felt led to ask her. I said, so you, you, want, you want the life of God to come into your life? And she goes, yeah. I said, you want to have the life of God in, in the church you go to? And she said, yeah. So you are willing to get anything out of the way that's keeping the life of God away from you? She said, well, yeah. Three weeks later, I had an altar call. The church service started this way. Imagine Sunday morning. This is the way it starts. Sunday morning, instead of worship, I'm, I'm calling out, and I'm saying, there's people here. You have a problem with witchcraft. You have a problem with horoscopes. You have a problem with uh, listening to people, psychics, and all this. And I said, you need to get up here. We're going to have a deliverance service to start out the church. Amen. Come on. She responded, among many others, most of the church, I think, came up. It's like awesome. Pastor's, pastor's greatest dream is his church responding to get delivered of everything just like that. And I'm telling you, the anointing came on me, but I only ministered to a couple of them real strong. And this one woman was one of them and really going after it. She was so upset she never came back. I'm telling you. <laughs> That's awesome. For those that didn't hear, a gentleman in the back row, he said, I think maybe you broke the broom. Hallelujah. It's a funny man. All right, let's go on. Uh, Revelation 2, 7. What's it say here? It says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto, to, to, <laughs> unto the churches for those that can speak. Come on. Yeah. He that hath an ear, let him hear. An ear. It's not like it's a big requirement, is it? He that hath an ear, let him hear. Praise God. That's why it really messes up a lot of church people because just anyone with an ear can hear. Kind of messes you up. Why? Because Matthew over there could just start preaching, prophesying something, get you a little messed up. I think it's going to happen. The children are going to mess us up. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to put their DSIs down or whatever they are now, and they're going to be going, Oh, I hear the Lord say. Come on. Just because they've got their face in a screen doesn't mean they're not getting it. Every once in a while, they, they pop off with, I bind that in the name of Jesus. It's like, what in the world? Where'd you get that? Well, that's what Bill says. Come on, that's awesome. I love to be rebuked when it's good. <laughs> okay, we got to do this. Go to Hebrews chapter 2. And we're going through some scripture tonight since I didn't have a real sermon last night. How many know I had a sermon even though I didn't? Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Even got a couple emails or messages th today of thanking me for stepping on toes and shaking people last night. Isn't that good? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't it fun? Praise God. Hebrews chapter 2. Thank you for shaking me up. All right. Praise God. No problem. Come back tonight. We'll do it again. All right. Hebrews chapter 2, 1 through 4. Let's look at it. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast in every transgression and disobedience received uh, a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord, was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and diverse miracles, 
and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. See, we've got to understand there's a whole, whole, a whole lot. I've got a little bit of southern thing coming, trying to, trying to get in there. A whole lot of things that's going to come along with the full measure of the Holy Spirit. How many want to walk in some diverse miracles? How many want to walk in some signs and wonders? Let me go ahead and say this. If it talks about miracles, and if it talks about signs and wonders, is that the same thing? It is, but it isn't. What I'm saying, the reason I'm saying this is because a lot of the body of Christ are, have convinced themselves that signs and wonders are when people are healed, when people have a miracle. And that, that's right too. But at the same time, that doesn't limit it to that because a lot of times it talks about miracles, signs, and wonders. The reason I'm saying it is because that's a lot of the convincing to say signs and wonders don't exist. But at the same time, the ones saying that, they don't really believe in miracles either. Okay, let's go on. Hallelujah. I just threw that one right on in there, didn't I? Hallelujah. Think about what the church as a whole would look like without the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say that again. Think about what the whole church, what the church would look like without the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's a disaster. And look how dead we are. Come on. There's some awesome artists on the, on the Christian radio and on, on different places, and they have some awesome worship. They have some also other awesome worship where they speak in tongues, but it's not allowed. They'll sing and speak in tongues, and they don't allow that on the radio. I don't know about you, but I want some of that. I've sent some CDs in the past to some radio stations. It has a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of Holy Ghost manifestation. They didn't like it. I even got a... I even got a letter from one of them said, please cease from sending us these types of music. We believe in a more modern, pure worship. One of them was Rick Pino. He might look a little bit different, but he's got a pure worship. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, there's some things going on, and I'm telling you, it's what we're doing is we're compromising our way out of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That's not even the person. That's why I said, it's amazing the Holy Spirit hasn't already said, forget you. Come on, go look for some aliens somewhere and give them some. <laughs> I'm not saying I believe in aliens. I'm just saying, think about it. It's ridiculous. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Let's go there. Let's go to Romans. Everybody want to go to Romans? I'm talking about the book. Chapter 8, verse 26. You know, I, I'm, I wish if I, was, if, if I was the person who had all the problems that I'm talking about as a church, I wish somebody would speak it. Come on. It's, it's when we get quiet. And try to please everybody and try to be a bunch of fluff. Sometimes we got to understand, I would rather not grieve the Holy Spirit and give him full recognition and full release than, to, than, than worry about everybody else's feelings. Romans 8, 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Groanings which cannot be uttered. And we freak out when people get sounds. <coughs> Come on, the church flips out when people start making a sound we don't understand. I'm not talking about speaking in tongues. I'm talking about when we start getting some... Uh, uh, uh. In Ontario, I'm not saying it's all God because I believe we get a lot of fruit in the midst of the real. Anybody believe that? But there was a revival going on. Most of you know the history about Ontario. They had a revival going on, and uh, a whole lot of barking started. People started barking. 
in the presence. Be like, whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Come on. But understand, in the midst of all that, some of that could be real because there are sounds that can be uttered that we won't even understand. It might sound like a bark, but it might just be the way it comes out. Every once in a while, a sound comes out of me and it almost sounds like a bark. More like a poodle, but it's a bark. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I'm not saying animal sounds. Now, there is understanding to me a lot of times animal sounds, especially in the area of snakes and certain things, I believe are usually a demonic sound. At the same time, when there's sounds coming forth that are from heaven, there's going to be sounds that come forth that are from the enemy. And at the same time, there's going to be sounds that come forth from just somebody trying to act like they're filled with something they're not. I remember there's a whole lot of people. We was having a ministry teams all over the place, healing teams going into revival. And, man, they just started all manifesting like the leaders. So everybody's all bouncing their head around and doing some stuff. It's like you're just manifesting by imitation. Come on. I don't know about you, but if you're going to do this, it might want to be God. Otherwise, you might get a white coat coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, some people probably do hurt themselves because they don't realize how much they're shaking. Hallelujah. I've seen people, I've seen people, and it's flesh, and I'm not, I'm under, I want you to understand, so I believe in those type of manifestations, but I don't, at the same time, I believe we grieve the Holy Spirit when we try to put it on when it's not there. But I've seen some people, they'll be going like this, and they're going like, whoo, oh, and they're shaking their hand. You know, there's some people of history, they had this handshake, so they think if their hand shakes, they're anointed. And I've seen people, they'll stop and they'll talk to somebody, and their mind, their brain gets focused on that person. And they'll stop their shake, and as soon as they turn away, it starts right back up. If it was God, it wouldn't stop while they talked. Now understand, if you just heard that, doesn't mean that you're just going to figure it out. I can't stop, because it's going to look fake. Hallelujah. You say, oh, that's strange. Let me say this. There's times I was preaching about casting out devils, and God told me not to say certain things. Why? Because there were some people that had devils in the service, and he said, don't give them a, any understanding before you cast them out. So I had to skip points. Why? Because the devil would go silent thinking that they're gone, and they're not. All they do is lie dormant. I had one time... Oh, now we get to call, talk about casting out devils. Hallelujah. We got time. You're ready. Let's go on. One time I had a, a, a gal. I was, I was, I was, God just told me, he said, ask her to stay after the church. And we had a group of women stay too. And I just said, you got devils in you and it needs to come out. And I'm available right now if you want. She's like, okay, if I got it. She goes, I don't think I got anything though. And I said, really? I said, then what? She goes, uh, I don't think I got anything, and she did something like this. I said, well, that's okay. If, we, if you don't, then there's nothing wrong with getting some prayer. <laughs> See, the devil was just letting me know he was there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And all of a sudden, she sat there, and she was the sweetest little woman, and just sat there real nice and polite, and she's just saying, we're all praying around her, and some people were getting too loud. and You don't have to shout all the time. I mean, I'm like, calm down. I mean, they're like, I command that demon to come out in the name of Jesus. We haven't even seen anything yet other than a little. <laughs> 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 I'm like, calm down. I mean, you're trying to go after something that ain't manifest yet. Let's get it manifested first. And all of a sudden, God said, touch her on the end of her nose. I was like, why? He said, it's going to irritate that demon. So I just went bloop, and that demon went <laughs> like that. I was like, Jesus, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I remember we dealt with that, and we dealt with it, and we dealt with it. And all of a sudden, it, she went, oh. And I was like, praise God. And all of, everyone in the team was like, oh, it's gone. It's gone. And I just stood back, and I was looking at it. And I was just looking at it. And all of a sudden, uh, 
the Lord said she set in on deliverance of others and she realized she's got education and she knows that's what it looks like when you're set free come on <laughs> so all of a sudden I said well it looks like it must be done it must be done and that was when the gold dust started coming off me I just went over by her and I just went and that gold, as soon as it hit her, and she started manifesting again. Hallelujah. It was like, see, she's not dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. She's still there. And I cast it, and I said, you're going to the dry uninhabited places. That's when they started talking back. I didn't know they did that till that day. <laughs> Praise God. She started saying, I ain't going nowhere. I said, yes, you are. She said, you shut up. I said, no, you shut up. I mean, it's a nasty old demons <laughs> saying, you're just stupid. You can't even preach anyway. And I said, well, you're just ignorant. You're going to dry places tonight. <laughs> I mean, we're just a little argument. And sometimes you start thinking it's a sweet little woman just standing there. But guess what? It's not. It's a demon in her. You got a monster inside of you. Get out. All of a sudden, I, I mean, just a, five minutes after that, and that thing, when it left, it really left. She could hardly get herself up. Then we went and ate a buffet. <laughs> <laughs> Casting out devils makes you hungry <laughs> on both ends. If you need it, if you get it out and set free, you get hungry. And I'm telling you, that's what we usually did. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We got done casting. We went and had buffet. And we took the demon uh, set free person with us. Come on, hallelujah. And you could see sometimes they'd sit at the buffet and they'd be glowing because they just got set free so much. Hallelujah. I mean, it's like food never tastes so good because people don't know how bad they're bound until they find out when they're set free. We're almost done. How about that? Okay. Next page. Acts chapter 1. Let's go there. Hallelujah. My goodness, we're turning the pages just like a real religious service. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I always had a temptation. And it's not a it's not an evil temptation. It's just a little bit fun. <laughs> when we bought the church in Litchfield, uh, the church building. We uh, we inherited their hymnals, and uh, I was tempted. Now, there's not, I mean, if you got hymnals, don't get offended, but I'm just talking. But I got tempted to tape some songs in the hymnals and tell them to turn to page so and so, and we're gonna sing together, and it'd be something like, "The enemy's been defeated" or something. I mean, something. That is not a normal hymnal type of song. Hallelujah. And uh, I was tempted, and I, I kept being tempted, but I have to do all those books. And I just kind of, that was too much work. But I, I, they probably would still give me the hymnals. Uh, praise God. They wouldn't give me my Bible, but they'd probably give me the hymnals. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Come on, it's fun. Hallelujah. Isn't it fun? Come on, everybody notify your face. We're still in the house of God. <laughs> Praise God. Some of you are going to go home more drunk than the people I saw that was drunk when I got here. Okay. <laughs> Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Upon, upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all <laughs> Judea and in Samaria. <laughs> and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. <laughs> Receive power. <laughs> Got one more point left. Can we do it? Not that we have to preach the whole sermon. What we need to be here 
is one with the Spirit. I'm more one right now than I've ever been. I'm not talking about the moment. I'm talking about my life right now. <laughs> I'm pretty one right now, but that's, that's, I'm not a pretty one, but I'm pretty one with him right now. <laughs> Got to have a content of what I'm saying here. <coughs> Our culture encourages this. Divisions, disputes, negative divisive types of competition. I have to do my syllables or I can't talk. We need unity in the home, business, and church. How many believe that? If we need unity that bad there, how much more we need with the Holy Spirit? Oh, we need to let the Holy Spirit know <laughs> that we need to repent. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to forgive us and come on in. Check in now. Vacancy in the house of Bill. Come on, I'm serious. I'm feeling a little good right now, but that's beside the point. It's still right. Anyhow, I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures real quick. It says 1 Corinthians 1.10 says this. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all may speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, and that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. Sound like any church you know? Not really. Oh, man, we got to disagree about something. Hallelujah. Praise and worship's too loud. Praise and worship ain't loud enough. Sermon's too long. Preacher's always drunk in the spirit. Philippians 2.2 2 says, Fulfill you my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. We are supposed to be in a unity, not just with us as a group, but also with the Holy Spirit. You know, we can get people... <laughs> we can get... <laughs> We could get people from all different backgrounds. I'm going somewhere. We go, we go, we go. We get, get all kinds of. <laughs> we can get all kinds of people from different backgrounds. Like in Collinsville right now, a lot of the people that are meeting there, we have people that are Catholic. When I say Catholic, that means they, they do the Catholic thing, but they do the, do the. Holy Spirit thing too. Come on. They want another prophetic word and they speak in tongues the whole service. Come on. Awesome. But at the same time, you got some people that is Pentecostal. Hallelujah. That used to be a really powerful thing. Hallelujah. But but some of them have to have to get used to me. Hallelujah. Come on. And then you get some people every once in a while come in and be a Baptist. But I'm telling you, we all come from all times, all, all times, all times, yeah. That's not what I was saying, but it's, we do do that too. Uh -huh. But uh, we all come from all different backgrounds. We come in together, and we worship the Lord, and we come in unity because we're going after the same purpose. When a lot of us that worship together every Sunday, every week, every day, and we have these services on Sunday morning in our church, we can't agree for a whole service. And we wonder where the Holy Spirit is. Hmm. Unity doesn't just happen. We need to be, uh, 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 yeah, there needs to be human effort. Come on. I remember one time I had a, had a young man come in the midst of revival to preach on finances. And uh, God to told me to ask him. And he had a very good revelation of finances. And uh he, he, he started preaching, and right off the bat, Gold Dust started covering his sermon. Well, it's, it's in a revival ministry, and we was having signs and wonders all the time. Massive. 
So Gold Dust started coming, and he all of a sudden he's like, "What in the world's all that?" And he's poured it off of his sermon. He's like, "I wasn't there," and all of a sudden, and you know, yeah, at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. Some of our leaders in the church said, "Oh, it, there was some up there." Try to talk themselves out of it. Well, you can't go against manifestation because he got to the point where he started he started doing this getting a little farther and a little farther and a little farther away from, and he went as far as he could, and it was a whole lot farther than this. It was like if I went all the way to that wall, standing from the pulpit, preaching from there, it was like in the shadow of the back hall. Hallelujah. Because of the presence that he started feeling. Come on, this is a man that didn't really respond to the presence till that day. He said he's never been the same since. Oh, but the but the leaders tried to convince everyone the glory dust was already there, the gold dust was already there. I'm telling you, the church will talk ourselves out of everything. We will. We'll talk ourselves out of everything. When God starts doing something, doesn't matter how many times you've seen it, how many times you believe in it, it, it we'll talk ourselves out of it. It's going to take some human effort for us to receive unity, especially with the Holy Spirit. It's hard enough, and that's one thing they're wanting to do in Centralia is have a unity of the church. They're inviting everybody. And when he first talked to me about having me come, and I'm telling you, he said he had all the churches in agreement and everything else. You know that's already falling apart. You know, before I even get there, there's a whole lot of people that aren't agreeing with everything. He's like, we just need to come together and agree that we're after the same purpose. We want God to come to our city. We want revival. Come on, in all the churches. And then all of a sudden somebody says, well, if they're involved, I don't want to be involved. If they're involved, I don't want to. It's like, get real. Yeah, that's what it is. We're like a bunch of elementaries. I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there. One of the biggest scriptures in this new book, Resurrection Power, talks about uh, resurrection of the dead being elementary. Doesn't that kind of mess us up? Elementary. The church is still in elementary, but we still don't have resurrection of the dead. Woohoo! Isn't that good? He said, "Some." He, he said, "Well, he didn't say some. He said, come spread it a little bit. If I got a little bit, I'm going to spread it. Spread it. It's good. Hallelujah. It's good. Spread a little bit. Hallelujah. I loved a couple of times this woman here. She could hardly get out of here. I loved it, hallelujah. And I loved, I've seen you get a little bit of hair in there too. Praise God, hallelujah. You can't have this, but you're supposed to hold it, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. That's my only copy. You're supposed to just hold that book for a while. Go ahead and read the chapter if you want, but just. <laughs> uh, one of the last chapters is one of the best ones about resurrection of the dead, hallelujah. Skip to that chapter, you'll be ready. Okay, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God, she'll go home and say, Jesse, I'm going to have to find something dead because i got to pray for it. <laughs> Woo. Hey, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've said that before. I've said, I've said something else too before. A lot of times, you know, we, we, we hear Jesus said to Lazarus, he said, Lazarus, come forth. Now, understand, uh, the Lord said, why did he say Lazarus? Because uh, everybody be walking out of there. <laughs> that, what? Come on, could, could you imagine, praise God, when you go to the funeral home and you're praying for somebody, you better get their name in there. Because yeah. <laughs> some of the funeral homes around this town, I know, because I've done funerals in this town, praise God, and, and I'm telling you, they got like three or four going at one time. Sometimes, hallelujah. Could you imagine they all got up? Wouldn't that mess up the town? <laughs> you know, and at the, yeah, and at the same time, let's go ahead and step into another arena. And we talked about this on the way here. You know, Elisha, he gets thrown in with some dead bones and all of a sudden they came to life. So really, how long dead do they have to be? Okay, uh, unit... <laughs> We're going to mess up some people. Come on, we're going to mess up some people in the days ahead with the Holy Ghost. Get ready. 
Now, I don't believe we're supposed to resurrect some 100-year-old dead. But at the same time, I'm not saying this, and I'm not saying this is fact. I'm not saying this is possible. But anything is possible with God, as far as I'm concerned. But what, what would happen if Catherine Kuhlman had another run? Just think about it. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying get your hopes up. I'm just saying anything can happen, and there is going to be some things that happen, even with me and all kinds of people like me, that's going to go, wait a minute. I don't know if that's right. I'm just saying. Because what if somebody gets thrown in a tomb and all of a sudden they come to life? I'm telling you, uh, the dry bones coming together, that's got to mess us all up. Think about this. I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm not saying anything. I'm just talking. But it messes us up a little bit. You know, if, j- if the Lord can breathe on the dry bones, breathe life back into them, flesh come back home. Oh, you say all that. I know I heard somebody say one time, well, that was just because we're supposed to be an army of the Lord. And that was bringing us back into unity only. How many know a lot of times when the Bible says something, it means it for a whole lot of reasons? If the Bible was just simple, the old theologians would have already been to heaven just like Elijah did. Unity of the Holy Spirit is a state of mind. Heart works together. It, doesn't re- it does require harmony just as a, a choir re- requires harmony. The Holy Spirit wants to work out. Uh, uh, in harmony. Look at her. She's almost got the whole book read. She says, I went to the back. You said go to the back. This is a good chapter. She's proofreading, and it's already been proofed. Get ready. Oh, and we get to do something else now. Oh, we're getting into a something. Sometimes the Lord starts speaking things, and just like I have to have a proof for my book, sometimes we have to be proven. And sometimes He starts proving us. And He proves us by showing up through us. Hmm, hey, some of you are about to have some showing up. I can't wait to see some of the most on fire students you've ever seen in your life. And I'm talking about the Supernatural School of Ministry. There's going to be some people that's going to get so stirred up in the Holy Spirit, they're going to be walking in a whole new power. Because I'm going to plug them into the big giant box, and they're going to find out it's the box of the Holy Spirit. And they're going to not like it and like it all in the same day. Because it's going to burn out some things and add on some things. We're going to get some senior citizens on fire for God and some young people and everywhere between. Oh, we're going to have some good times. and We're going to get into some things. Some of you are about to step into a whole new place. The Lord told me to say this tonight. He said, Holy Spirit unity is what we need. Holy Spirit unity. He said to him this this way. He said, be filled again. He says, be filled again. Repeating for a reason, he said, be filled again. Be filled again. Again, be filled again. Be filled full. Be filled until you're full. And then be filled some more. And I did mean to say more. It's much like more, but it's without the or. It's more. I want to be filled with more of the Lord. Shh. Come on. After last night, you should be seedless. It's a special watermelon. Come on. (laughs) 
You say, I wasn't here. Get the CD. You'll fi- have fun. Something's got to step on something you got. Oh, yeah. We got some good times coming. We're in a, we're in a, we're in like an accelerator compact ministry coming. It's going to mess us all up. What are you going to do, Bill, if people start doing more than you do? I'm going to go sit in their service. That's what I'm going to (laughs) do. Hallelujah. I'm not too prideful, praise God. I'll look up and say, that's my student raising the dead. Praise God. Let them raise the dead. I don't care if I'm raising the dead or they're raising the dead. Somebody got brand new knee, brand new knee, brand new knee in the right knee. Right now, just got it. A new knee coming in your right knee right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, okay. God said don't leave the left out. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody just got a left one. Hallelujah. Left knee, right knee, brand new, supernatural replacement of knees in Jesus' name. Not a doctor doing it, but the supernatural. Doctor, doctor, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. Ha. Yeah. Hmm. Come on now. Let's have a good time. Some of you don't even realize how far gone I am. (laughs) I don't twitch and moan and groan for no reason. And why act ignorant if you don't have to? I'm not on the floor yet. I've been there, though. God's coming into our lives in a greater dimension. (laughs) Okay, we'll do it. We're going to play a song. We're going to worship. Yeah, you heard me, right? (laughs) We're going to, yeah, we'll fix them. (laughs) <laughs> there's some southern scriptures in the Bible hmm hi hi okay fill this place is what we're going to play because we want him to fill this place come on it doesn't the spirit of God doesn't have to come just during the worship in the beginning don't forget there's waves there's waves Come on. I remember one time some people in the church in revival ago said this. They go, man, I'm wasted. A lot of the church people got all offended. Don't be saying that. That sounds too much like the world. Well, who do you think stole it? The world did. Let's get wasted on God. Oh, that messes us up, don't it? What do you think getting filled means? Mm, some of you don't even know. Some of you don't even know. Holy Spirit, drive them home. <laughs> I love that laugh, don't you? Hallelujah. All right. Mm-hmm. Praise God. I remember one time we had this guy in the service. I'm closing. I'm still closing. We're done. There was a man called up front and God told me to lay my hand on his chest and just release fire. And he said, look out when you do it. Now, that's kind of strange coming from the Lord. Look out. Now, this man, he was a very religious man, been a pastor, and quit that job a couple times. Can't blame him there. (laughs) But anyway... So I got my hand up, and I looked at him, and he's just, you know, real, had his arms at half mass. All of a sudden, I just said, fire! He swung both arms like he was punching out, and then flew back and fell without a catcher. Big boy went down hard. He said he went into a level of the glory that he's never been before. I'm telling you, we've got to expect the unexpected. 
expect to be taken into things. You know, some things we don't believe in, we got to believe in. What if an angel came and spoke to you? Come on. What if he came and smote you? So he could speak to you. A lot of times in the Bible, that's what they did first. They had to smote them just to get them to hit listen. Why else are they going to hit them? Some of us, and I believe a lot of us today, we need to be smoted four or five times to get us to know supernatural realm is open for business. Fill this place.